Speaker, if the ACT Party is so concerned about there being one law for all in this country, then they need to be looking really closely at what those laws are, because those, that one law is so discriminatory, it is ridiculous. And if the ACT Party is so uh, concerned about one person, one vote, then I say that four of those me the members of that party should be resigning because they are here on the second vote that they got from that one people. We have, in our uh, situation, one person, two votes, and four of those, the members of that party are here on that second vote. Mr Speaker, since the Local Government Auckland Law Reform Bill had its first reading, four distinctive events have occurred which influence our response to the ongoing activity related to governance arrangements for the Auckland region. The first was the annual review of race relations released in March by the Human Rights Commission. That review identified Māori representation in local government and an effective voice for Māori in the decisions of the new Auckland Council as being among the top 10 race relations priorities. The review drew attention to the transition of Auckland councils into one super city council and noted particular disappointment at the lack of courage from the government in failing to consider the proposal for dedicated Māori seats on the council. In fact, the government's own race relations commissioner, Joris de Vries, admitted that there was a valid argument for dedicated Māori representation on the super city council. He also put into words the fear that specific services or programmes which do not, which do so much to shape the unique social fabric by which Auckland has earned its name might be either, quote, overlooked or rationalised out in the transition. The second event was the successful drawing from the ballot of the private members' bill on the 6th of May this year. The local electoral Māori representation amendment bill, sponsored by our colleague, Māori Party MP to Uruo Flavel, requires all district, city and regional councils to establish Māori wards and constituencies to provide for Māori representation. The bill is put forward very much in response to the damning injustice of the Auckland situation. The local electoral Māori representation bill reflects the reality that so many decisions made by local authorities impact hugely on our people. Te Uruo's bill aims to give Māori a real seat at the decision-making table. The third key event was the announcement by another of my colleagues, Dr Peter Sharples, that New Zealand was finally prepared to support the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. And in case anyone has not yet read the Declaration, Article 18 of the Declaration sets out the aspiration that Indigenous peoples have the right to participate in decision-making in matters which would affect their rights through representatives chosen by themselves an aspiration which, it appears, is already doomed to the rubbish bin as a result of this local government Auckland Law Reform Bill. And the fourth milestone was the tabling of a minority report by my colleague Hone Harawera, who was our representative on the Select Committee especially set up to consider the implementation of the Auckland governance arrangements. Mr Harawera concluded that the failure to uphold the nation's constitutional foundations current law and the wish of the people can only result in re legislation that is in breach of Te Tiriti or Waitangi and is short-sighted and discriminatory. I would refer all members to that erudite statement which describes in Mr Harawira's distinctive style that this bill is short-sighted. It fails to acknowledge the reality of what Māori have to offer the greater Auckland region and it is discriminatory. It denies recognition of the status of Māori. I come then to the deliberations of the Auckland Governance Legislation Committee. The committee had the benefit of receiving 786 submissions from interested groups and individuals. A key focus for the Māori Party has been the way in which Māori have responded to the direction to establish arrangements for a board to promote matters of significance for mana whenua and Māori for tamaki makaurau. It would be fair to say the response has been subdued, with an overwhelming sense of injustice felt by the submitters. The submission from the Hauraki Māori Trust Board sums it up. The Trust Board continues to support the need for direct representation of mana whenua and Māori 
on the new Auckland Council and considers that the opportunity to be truly transformative and to better align government and Māori thinking on what treaty-based relationships at a regional and local government mean was missed. This, Mr Speaker, is at the crux of the issue around the representation of Māori in this Auckland Law Reform Bill. For while the Local Government Act 2002 sets the expectation that local bodies will foster Māori capacity to contribute to the decision-making process, processes of the local authority, the reality is that without explicit structures and effective strategies for engaging Māori communities, the status quo prevails. And the status quo, as in the 2007 local government elections, is that less than 5% of successful candidates were Māori, although Māori formed nearly 15% of the population. In fact, many councils have no Māori members at all. In the absence of the provision for representation on the new Auckland Council, and as a means to mitigate potential risks for whānau hapu iwi of the creation of a board under Part 7 of the Act, the Hauraki Māori Trust Board proposed that a clause that requires the new Auckland Council to give effect to the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi be introduced. The recommendation from Hauraki is something that the Māori Party will seek to progress during the Committee of the Whole House stage of this bill. The complex set of issues around representation with the Treaty Partner cannot be resolved by parking such issues off to the side in an advisory group which is adjunct to the Auckland Council infrastructure. We do not consider such marginalisation is reflective of such a treaty partnership. The new section 67 to 74 of the bill set out the process by which an independent statutory board will be established. The concerns that we still have are to do with how the mana whenua and Māori board will be supported to be equal participants in the planning and decision-making process with local government. The Select Committee suggests these concerns can be addressed by making the board subject to the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act. This would mean that all information on the activities and decisions of the board was freely available. Well, information is all well and good, but where does the authority reside when it comes to the decisions to be made? Ngāti Whātua o Arake reminded the Select Committee that authority resides in proper and broad representation of mana whenua. And yet the seven mana whenua members of the Māori Statutory Board, in the view of Ngāti Whātua, fail to do this. Ngāti Whātua advised that the selection provisions are flawed and may well give an outcome where major iwi and hapu in the areas they represent are excluded from the Māori Statutory Board. They believe that there is a better way which will ensure that representation of mana whenua interests is appropriately spread over the territory of the board of the super city. Their advice that the board should be made up of two members each from Ngāti Whātua, Waikato, Hauraki Marutuahu Ropu and a single member from Ngāti Wai Ropu. That will at least ensure that every major mana whenua grouping within the super city has membership on the Māori Advisory Board. Ngāti Whātua are emphatic that the selection body must be proportionate to the mana whenua interests in the super city. The bill describes effectively an electoral college with seven mana whenua members and the two tauraheri members appointed to the Māori Advisory Board. Ngāti Whātua suggests that without care, a bare majority on the selection body can appoint all members of the Māori Advisory Board. This could create an injustice in the potential for exclusion of one or more major mana whenua groupings in the advisory board. This would be unjust not only to the tribes concerned, but also to the lands those tribes have within their rohe. Mr Speaker, there are many complexities in this bill, including in particular the management of transport, water supply and wastewater services, which are nigh impossible to raise in our allocated 10 minutes. I return to the considered view of my friend Mr Harawera. This bill is short-sighted. It is discriminatory and the Māori Party will be opposing it every step of the way.